Hey, how's it going? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and what I got for you in this video is the Laowa 9mm full frame f5.6 wide dreamer lens. Now, this is a rectilinear design, so that means there's not going to be that much distortion, and this lens is crazy, crazy wide. It actually goes for about $800, $799, and you can see it actually looks kind of like a fisheye lens from the front. The max aperture is f5.6, so it's a little bit slower, but that slower aperture is still really good for landscape photography, architecture photography, real estate photography, for example. So I'm going to show you some sample photos and some sample video, and I'm also going to show you just how wide it is. So right now, what I'm using is a 35 millimeter lens on my full frame Sony a7C. So I'm going to switch it to this 9 millimeter lens so you can see the difference between 35 and 9. And I think you're going to be absolutely blown away at how much of the room you see. Right now I'm like, I could almost touch the lens. Like if I lean forward I can touch the lens. So that's how close it is. It's about three feet away. So when I put this sucker on you'll see exactly what I mean. Now what did I tell you? Isn't this insane just how wide this lens is? Unbelievable, right? And you can see it's so wide you get these weird distortion effects here. If I reach out, you get like these uh, slender man hands, which is kind of cool. You know, you can make some cool effects, you know, like do some interesting moves like that, I guess. I don't know. But um, that's just how wide this lens is. Let me just show you what 20 millimeter looks like quick, and then we'll go back to 35 millimeter. All right, so now this is 20 millimeter. This is my Sony FE 20 millimeter f 1.8 G lens. So that's what 20 millimeter gets you. You saw what 9 millimeter gets you. Now let me switch it back to 35 millimeter. All right, so here we are back at 35 millimeter, and this is the perspective that I prefer in this environment. All right, guys, so let's just get right into it. All right, so here she is in my hand, and you can see it's a fairly compact lens. Now, again, this lens goes for about $799, $800. It has an aperture range of f5.6 to f22. It has two extra low dispersion elements, two spherical elements, and two UHR elements. Now this is a rectilinear design, so that means there's very little distortion. This lens has a 135 millimeter field of view, which is absolutely incredible. And if you look at the front of it, it really looks kind of like a fisheye lens. You can see just how bulbous the front of the optic is there and it's uh, you know like I said looks like a fisheye but it's not it's uh, rendered to come out fairly straight so you'll see in the sample photos that the uh, distortion control is really good now it has a minimum focus distance of 4.72 inches or 12 centimeters it has 14 elements in 10 groups it has five diaphragm aperture blades and it weighs in at about 12.35 ounces or 350 grams so like I was saying it's very very compact and fairly lightweight considering how wide this lens is now the max aperture of f5.6 really does help keep the weight down it has a nice manual aperture here it is clicked but it's like a soft click it's not a hard click um, and the focus ring feels very very good it's got the nice lines here in both feet and meters to help set your focus correctly and the dampening feels really nice now if you look at the back you can see everything is made out of metal it's a nice metal flange design. The whole lens feels very, very solid, very brickish, as a matter of fact. It has this built-in lens pedal hood, and it's got the kind of lens cap that just slips over, like so. So let me show you what it looks like on the A7C here, which is what I use to review this lens. You just got to line up the dot with the dot, and there you have it. So that's what she looks like mounted to my Sony A7C, and that's how I used it for this review. All right, so let me show you some sample photos and sample video of what this guy can do in the real world here. All right, so here we are in the lab, just doing quick lab test. And this is about three feet away from the chart. And this is just how wide of a view um, that you get with this nine millimeter. So if I zoom in here, this is at f5.6, you can see the sharpness is excellent. If I go to two to one, 200% rather, you can see the sharpness is actually really good across the board. It's a little bit sharper in the center. It does lose a little bit, but not bad at all. And that's 100%. So that's f5.6. Now you can see there is significant vignetting on this lens. It has a lot of vignetting. It does have a little bit of distortion as well, but it's really well controlled. I can actually go down here and I can control the distortion. I can pull it back just a little bit. Somewhere right around here looks pretty good. 
and you could hit crop here to crop it if you wanted to fix the distortion but it's really not that bad in my opinion so I just left everything as is but it does have a little bit of distortion like I said significant vignetting now normally when you stop a lens down the vignetting will go away a little bit but in this case it uh, really didn't go away that much it kind of sticks around the whole time all right so this is f5.6 we're looking at this one here is f8 and this one here is f11 and you can see the sharpness is just excellent pretty much at all the apertures here I'm gonna zoom in here this is f16 and this is going to be f22 so again you can see the sharpness is really good at all the apertures here in the lab testing now here i just got pretty much as close as i could to the quarter as you can see here i took another angle so i was about six inches away from the quarter the minimum focus distance on this lens is about five inches or 12 centimeters so i wasn't quite as close as i could get but i got really close just for this test so you can see what you could expect at such a close test so again zoomed in here you can see the sharpness is excellent at f5.6 you could see the bokeh balls look very good which is quite impressive and again you could see the dollar bill here is out of focus so the depth of field is coming into play there so now when i stop down to f8 if i zoom in here you could see the hexagon balls here for the bokeh butt rendering and that's because of the five blade aperture diaphragm and if i stop it down a little more here's f11 here's going to be f16 and here's going to be f22 so you can see the depth of field is quite a bit when we go from f5.6 to f22 as you can see here all right so let's move on to some of the real world photos shall we all right so when i first got this lens i was just playing around with it and i do notice it on the edges it does do this stretching effect so it will take round objects for example and just stretch them out you could see what it did to my laptop it basically elongated the laptop here but it did do a good job keeping uh, things fairly straight so i was pretty impressed with that and i took another snapshot of the bike on the back of my car here and you can see how this wheel here it kind of stretched the circular wheel out a little bit because it was kind of too close to the edge there so you got to make sure if you're posing a subject that you're not you don't have it too close to the edge if you don't want that much distortion associated with it now here's just looking at my mountain bike pedal and this was pretty much the minimum focus distance and you can see just how awesome this lens renders it really makes the pedal look like epic you know really stretched out and 3d looking pretty impressed with that result here's just looking down a hallway so you can see just how long the hallway looks the hallway realistically is about 30 feet but here it looks like 150 feet just because of the super wide angle lens all right so here i'm just sitting in my work van and i just wanted to show you what an amazing wide angle perspective you can get sitting in a car seat so again looking from inside the car this is the kind of view you can get now here's just a quick check and again the gas station looks so small i'm really not far away at all from the from the gas station pumps but it looks like i'm like 30 feet away i'm actually only like 10 15 feet away it's crazy but here you can see the significant vignetting it's another reason i wanted to show you these two shots because you can see the natural vignetting that this lens has but the sharpness is quite good as you can see here clarity sharpness and again those straight lines just look very very good now i took a bunch of pictures at this covered bridge and uh, i created a bunch of hdrs which i'll show you in a second but i just wanted to show you a couple of the single frames before you see the hdr so if you're un unfamiliar with hdr what that stands for is high dynamic range photography and it requires taking multiple exposures and then blending those exposures together using software i have an excellent video tutorial on how to do that using my sony a7c if you want to check that out and uh, here's just a look inside the bridge and here's just a look from down by the river and then down the road here i just took a couple other shots i went under this overpass it looked kind of cool here's just a quick picture of my car here's another one here's just one that I edited a little bit so i just wanted to show you what it looks like this is straight off the camera raw file and this is just edited basically added some shadows and some color and contrast i did the same thing with this next picture of the post office if you look at the original that's what the original raw file looks like and then with some playing around here in lightroom i was able to do that just basically dragging up the shadows and the vibrance you could see here i brought the highlights down the shadows up and i dragged up the vibrance so now here's just a couple samples from inside my house i just wanted to show you if you were to use this for real estate photography and or architecture photography this is pretty much what it looks like and i live in a pretty small townhouse style so 
this lens really makes the space look much larger than it actually is, which is quite good for selling if you're trying to sell a house or whatever, in my case, a, a townhouse. And I thought these pictures came out great. I mean, they, you know, the house is a little bit messy, but just for sample photos, I thought they came out really good. And it's a good example of what you can do in a small, relatively small house for real estate photography purposes or architecture purposes. And again, obviously I would have cleaned up the house if I was actually trying to do real real estate, but I just took these quick snapshots here to give you an example of what you can expect. And here's just a sort of a creative shot looking down the spirally staircase. I thought it was kind of cool. And then looking over the balcony here, you can just see how vast this looks. I mean, it looks like a huge room, but it's actually not that big in real life. Love the way this ultra wide angle lens looks. And now just looking down a little further, you can see the railing. Uh, it's, it's quite impressive. And here's just one of Layla's room. This shot actually looks kind of green. and fix that a little bit. All right, so let's move on to these HDR pictures and I'll show you what kind of epic shots you can get with some photo editing. Now check this out. Again, this is three exposures and I have a tutorial on how to do this if you guys want to learn how to do it. So I took three exposures using the, using the bracketing feature on the Sony a7C. So I took a negative two exposure, a zero exposure, and a plus two exposure, and then combined the images to create this. Here's another one. I was super close to the opening of the covered bridge here, so I just had it angled up, and this lens is so wide. It looks like I was pretty far back, but I was literally like almost underneath it when I took that. And then moving in on the bridge here, here's just one looking inside the bridge. And here's one from the outside of the bridge, and you could see just that vast, epic, wide-angle view you get. And you could see it, how it stretches the corners, and it just makes the sky look really cool. And here's just another one. I'll just zoom in here so you can see the detail. Looks really good, in my opinion. And the fringing and stuff like that is, is really well controlled, considering this is just one from underneath the bridge. Here's another one, just looking at the, uh, the main truss or support beam. Looks kind of cool. And just another snapshot here. And here's the sign for the bridge. You can actually see my gear and stuff down here on the right. And Livingston Manor Covered Bridge, formerly Mott's Flat Bridge, later known as the Vantran, original town lattice truss built by John Davidson in 1860. Really cool. Gotta love covered bridges. Now, going under an overpass, I showed you that shot before. Here's what it looks like as an HDR. So you can see it looks quite a bit more dramatic. You get the cool sky and the shadow detail. And here's just one of my car. Looks pretty cool. Super wide angle lens. Creates this very interesting distortion effect. And then the HDR just gives you that dreamy, surreal look. And uh, particularly cool with cars. Now here's looking at the Livingston Manor College or whatever it's called. And then here is from the front. Looks quite good. Again, super wide angle effect that you get. And then getting closer, I walked across the bridge and got another shot right in front of the flagpoles and stuff. And this just looks incredible. Now check out what this looks like in video form. So you can see just that weird stretching effect when you actually pan from left to right. It's pretty cool though how it works. And that's how you get this ultimate wide angle lens effect. Now here's just one of the post office that I thought came out pretty good. All right, guys, let's wrap this review up, shall we? So at the end of the day, I really enjoyed using the Laowa 9mm ultra wide angle Dreamer lens. It was a lot of fun and as you can see by the real world sample photos and the HDR photos and also the video I got, that the lens performs really well. Um, it does suffer from pretty significant vignetting. Uh, it does have some distortion but it's fairly minimal and um, the colors and clarity and sharpness are pretty darn good. It is a little bit hard to just get the focus just right, but I did use the focus zoom feature, the magnify zoom feature here on the Sony a7C, and I just dialed it in. And also on the lens, it actually has distance markers, which is also very helpful for trying to get the focus as close as possible. Like when you're really close to a subject, it's pretty easy to use the lines on the lens to help you just get there quicker. Um, otherwise, pretty much near, just before infinity, is where I used it for 
almost all the other photography shots, like the HDR shots of that bridge and everything. So the sharpness is pretty darn good. The fringing is fairly well controlled. There is a little bit of fringing in the super high contrast areas, but again, 135 millimeter view is just incredible. And this is by far the widest lens I've ever used. All right, guys, well, that pretty much wraps up this review. I recommend the ultra wide angle Laowa lens. It's a great build quality. And the optical quality is also very good and it gives you an extreme 135 millimeter viewing angle, which is absolutely amazing. And it makes for really killer landscapes. It just gives you that super wide angle look. And you'll, you know exactly what I mean when we went over the, uh, the sample photos, just that wide angle look is, is just so awesome. All right, guys, so be sure to check below the video for all those links to the equipment used. So that pretty much wraps up this review. I will catch up with you next time. Have a great day and uh, be safe out there, right?